What we have here is a beautiful French mantel clock, probably made around the late 19th century. It has a open escapement and a mercury-filled pendulum. If you've seen the film Beauty and the Beast, you'll probably recognize the clock. And as for the cast in this video, I'll let you decide which one's which. So why did they use mercury-filled pendulums? Clock accuracy depends on a constant swing of the pendulum and it's the effective length of the pendulum which needs to remain the same. But with the variation of temperature, the pendulum will either expand or contract and either speed the clock up or slow it down. The effective length of a pendulum isn't just a measure of the pendulum length, it's the distance from the pendulum hanger to the centre of gravity point. If the temperature rises, a steel or iron pendulum would expand, lowering the centre of gravity point and therefore slowing the clock down. So they put sealed tubes of mercury on the pendulum so as the temperature rises, the mercury expands and moves the weight distribution upwards. So effectively it compensates for the pendulum expansion, keeping the overall weight distribution the same. Well, mercury isn't used much these days, mainly because it can give off poisonous fumes if exposed. So care is needed when handling the pendulum. Fortunately, this clock has a large marble case, and so it will protect the pendulum pretty well. So let's take this clock to the workshop now, and I'll show you what else I've been working on. Well, here we are in the workshop, ready to start work on this clock. Um, the clock was bought um, several years ago now, uh, as a, uh, going very, very cheap, uh, so I had to go for it. Um, things that were wrong with the mercury pendulum, as you can see there, the hanger on it was missing, or in fact it was broken, so I've had to purchase another hanger. Which I have here. And I thought I'd treat myself um, when servicing a clock. The oiling is very important, and I wanted to make sure that I used the right oil. Um, one of my mentors, although he doesn't know it, is Tommy Jobson. You should check out his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, he's a master watchmaker and clockmaker and I was looking to see which oils he used and these two here I bought uh, and one's for the uh, lighter uh, cog work and one's for the uh, for the lower down the gear train stuff um, not cheap by any means I mean here we are there's a little pop there A little pot here. Don't get much, but it's good quality. Um, I'm sure that, along with a little oil cup, so you just put the oils in there, and then you can just keep him. So when you went to use it, you just flick that open and dab with your oil stick into there. 
that little lot there cost not far short of a hundred pounds so not cheap but you know that when the clock is oiled that it's going to be good oil and keep the mechanism going for many years right let me take you for a tour of the workshop and show you what else i've been working on uh, and one of the reasons why i only get a video out about once every month So when I'm doing work on clocks and I need to use a lathe, I use my small lathe here. Um, great machine and uh, it's done a lot of work for me so far. Trouble is uh, it runs at a fair speed and you have no real control over it. And when you're polishing arbors of wheels of a clock or drilling holes in four uh, small holes, um, this is a bit cumbersome. But I've had an idea and I've just bought something which I'm going to develop which should help me a lot in the future. Come this way. So this is the latest. So this is it, the Singer sewing machine. And what am I going to do with this? Well, underneath we have the old treadmill. It's a new belt, but the thought was take this away and put a small lathe on here, which can then be driven by the foot pedal. Can't wait to start it. So other things I'm working on. So here we have a Russian clock mark. My dear friends from Estonia. Uh, this was the grandmother's clock, uh, which she wants me to repair. So I should look forward to looking on that one. It had a crack in the glass here, so I've purchased some more glass, second-hand glass to go in there. And the other thing I've been working on is the restoration of my Honda CB1100R motorbike. This bike was bought from a breakers yard in Wanstead, London for about 30 years ago. It was a French machine, it had been raced and when I got it uh, the engine had blown up. In fact, quite a serious blow up. So I had to have the engine I stripped the engine down and I got the cylinders um, reboard and then put in new pistons, rings and comrades and had it back on the road. About 20 years ago, this was back on the road. Um, didn't do many miles on it because after that I got a a Buell motorbike which I've been using ever since but time is now to get it restored so it's a bit by bit restoration project everything has been 
looked at. A bit like clocks really. You take things apart, give them a good clean and replace seals, o-rings uh, and put it all back together and paint. So similar process really but on a slightly larger scale than the clocks. But that's good for me, enjoy it. Work I've done recently so far, I have taken the four carburetors off and totally stripped down, cleaned, replaced jets uh, to the right side and put back together. I've taken the swing arm off, repainted it, and I'm just in the process of putting that all back together again and I'm working now on the rear disc brake assembly With recent work is working on the rear brake master cylinder again a total strip down uh, clean putting in new seals and this will get painted ready to go back on the machine I've got some new screws to replace the damaged ones here. One thing with this bike, it was a rare um, edition bike. They only made 150 of them. Uh, so parts are either very, very scarce or, or no longer are available. You can get seals and O-rings and things like that. Okay, so um, for servicing it's fine, but... Um, I'm trying to keep it as original as possible and it means that uh, some pieces I have to make from hand because I'm not going to pay the ridiculous prices that they're asking for um, uh, online. Um, this bike is going to get sympathetically restored to the fact where it's going to be used and worked on. It's not going to be a, a mint machine. Um, uh, by any means um, again because the price of uh, parts and this doesn't have the original fairing uh, you can see the seat unit there and the tank and this fairing here isn't the original one to get new fairings for this you're talking uh, several thousand pounds just for the uh, fiberglass uh, I'm not prepared to do that but I shall get it looking smart and it's 40 years old now, this machine, so it could well be that um, I will keep this one and sell the bill because I will get free tax, um, no need to get it MOT'd every year, which is a requirement in, in, in the UK for machines under 40 years old, but when it gets to 40 years old, it becomes a classic and uh, you get this as an advantage, so it'd be cheaper to run. So this has taken a fair bit of my time. What with uh, um, work in general, taking nearly 50 hours a week out of my time. I don't really have a lot of time less to work on clocks, but I'm doing my best and uh, I should still be able to get one video out a month on clocks. So um, I sure say farewell for now thanks very much for watching um i've recently just got over the 300 uh, subscribers mark so thanks so much it really helps a lot um please leave some comments below uh, if you want to see me working on any of the things i've shown you in this video in more detail do do say and i'll, I'll try and uh, fit that in as well if not this work here on the motorbike on these other little clocks and things I shall just do on the side and just focus on the ones I've chosen so far. In other words, the French uh, mercury filled pendulum clock. That's the plan. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.